Rust is being used to power the world's most important infrastructures, storing trillions of messages and being used in the Linux kernel. But is it extremely hard to build a graphical user interface using Rust? Over 56% of Rustations think that the GUI development needs heavy improvement. It's a huge reason why a lot of people won't even adopt Rust in the first place. Today, I'm going to explain why the traditional approaches of building a user interface don't really work in Rust and how there's a combination of different approaches that lead to building a stable UI toolkit in Rust. So when Rust first came onto the scene, it had to be a lot different than other programming languages. For example, in a lot of programming languages, you've probably heard of the term garbage collector, which refers to a feature in a programming language runtime that will automatically manage memory allocation and deallocation for you. This is generally pretty awesome. As a developer, I love not having to think about how to manage my memory or how to deallocate my memory. Rust, on the other hand, deals with something called ownership, which is enforced at compile time. This means that values are owned by variables, values can be referenced by variables, and when an owning variable goes out of scope, it is deallocated. Another thing that makes Rust unique is that it protects against multiple threads trying to access the same data at once, which is also called the data race. It does this by making sure you have either one mutable reference or any number of immutable references, making sure that the references are always valid, and making sure that the value cannot be mutated when a valid reference exists. And last but not least, Rust is not an object-oriented language like Java, C++, or JavaScript, meaning that it does not support abstract classes or class inheritance. Let me break this down for you by using an example. An object-oriented language typically starts with a top-level class called component with a draw method. Then each component, like button or text, would inherit from this class and then reuse the functions from it. You can see how it can become a headache really, really fast fast. Instead, Rust is slightly different because it has something called traits instead. So here's how this example might work in Rust using a trait. In Rust, I would add a common trait called draw to our library. And as long as the button object, the text object, and the image object implement this draw trait, then they are considered a UI component. I can even do something like add a random sandwich object to my UI component library as long as it implements the draw trait. Although I don't think I'd be able to get that PR approved very easily. So what makes building a user interface in Rust so hard? So all these things that we just talked about that makes Rust so unique is also what makes building a user interface in Rust so hard. In the coding world, UI is usually designed as a tree-like structure, but building a tree-like structure is really hard using inheritance in Rust. Let me use a concrete example to help you understand this. Let's say we're trying to build out this timer modal. We can separate its core design into a tree like this. So how would a very popular popular language like React.js handle the concept of this component tree. Well, the root component is held by the framework, and each component inherits from a common base component that keeps track of all its children and how to traverse the children. Traversing the tree is critical for event handling. The framework needs to be able to walk the tree to determine which components should receive an event. React's component model is based on a class or a function that returns a component. The base class components are React.component and React pure component. These base classes provide methods to handle the component lifecycle and state management. The component tree is rendered using the react dom.render method, which takes the root component as an argument. So hopefully now you understand how this abstraction kind of works. The top level component is like this super component that can control everything and knows how to move around the entire tree structure. So how would this example be implemented in Rust? It's a lot harder because the lack of object oriented programming in Rust Rust means that we can't have this super top level component that controls everything. So as I mentioned before, Rust uses something called traits instead. Here is how the draw trait would be implemented. With this implementation, we already run into some really annoying issues. The first thing is that traits don't hold any data, which requires each individual component to store the components underneath it. This means that some children can return as an empty vector, and this makes it a lot harder to walk the tree in the same way that you would would in an object-oriented programming language. The second thing is that Rust's mutability rules makes it really hard to change features in different components, 
which in a UI library is kind of a must. For example, imagine having a button that doesn't respond or do anything when you click on it. Third is that event handling with mutable states is a huge headache. UI frameworks typically use an event loop that pulls the operating system for whether there was any user input. Once they receive the input, then the framework updates that state. A common solution to these problems is something called interior mutability, which basically moves the Rust ownership checks to runtime instead of compile time. However, it's not the most ergonomic solution, and it also comes with a lot of safety issues. Now, it, it seems like all is lost when it comes to really building a GUI in Rust, but let's talk about some of the things that Rust does well. There is a whole website called arewegooiyet.com dedicated to keeping us updated if Rust is GUI ready yet. There's also a lot of progress in the open source community with projects like Iced or Tari that uses Rust to power your native web view. Another great solution to this is just to avoid object-oriented programming altogether and go deep into the Rust way of doing things. A great example is using the Elm architecture of doing things, which consists of the model, the view, and the update. The model just holds all of the state for the view. The view then converts the model of data into something that you can see on the screen. Update is then responsible for mutating the model using programmer-defined objects called MSGs. The Elm model makes a lot more sense in Rust for a few reasons. It is functional and it's mutable, meaning that you don't have to mutate your data because it's always going through the update function. For example, you can insert an entirely new value, but since there is still only one single owner to the model, there's no alarms that are being set off. Another thing is that Rust enums make it really easy to determine different data types. So that way you can pattern match really easily in your code. I keep going back to Iced as an example, but the Iced project has a really good example of how to use Rust enums to increment or decrement a number using buttons. Now I do want to mention that the Elm architecture with model view and update is not new at all. In fact, modern frameworks like React served as a replacement for model view controller frameworks. Or if you're familiar with how Redux resolvers work, it's very similar in that way too. Now all this to say that the Elm architecture is not always fun and dandy, which is why there have been things that have tried to replace it. So another alternative to the Elm architecture is something called the Entity Component System Architecture. Wow, that is a mouthful. The framework owns all of the components. Components are responsible for their own state, responding to user input and rendering onto the screen, but the framework is responsible for storing the relationship between all the components and the interactions between them all. For Rust, the framework is the single owner of all the components. So this approach is actually the approach that worked the best for us at Warp, and here's a more detailed look into how we did it. In Warp, we call each component a view with a unique ID called an entity ID. Each window stores a map of the entity ID to the actual view that is identified by the ID. This identity ID is then the primary way we can store any state that references the view. So this way we can store a mapping of each view to the parent view so that we can go upwards in the tree. This data is stored as a series of maps and lists that are owned by the system, and it's essentially as close as we can get to mocking an object-oriented programming language. So in Warp, for example, if we had three windows of Warp open, we would then have three different views that are each mapped to three different identity IDs. Now this all seems very complicated, but at the end of the day, what this means is that we can create a component tree structure without having to deal with the inheritance aspect of it. Because of our implementation, we have really rich UI elements and we have performance that matches almost every other single terminal that exists now. If you're curious and you want to try out our GUI experience, then you can download Warp for free using the link in the description below. And last but not least, what is your opinion on building a GUI in Rust? Are you using native bindings or are you using open source projects like Tori or Iced or just something else in general? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching today's video. Bye!